to show you something I've been working on. A buddy of mine brought over his wood chipper and he was having a hard time getting it to start. Um, he could get it started with starter fluid and um, it ran for a tiny bit but then it would shut off. So he asked me to take a look at it and I thought since we're e-learning it might be a good uh, opportunity just to make a quick video and show you what I'm working on. Um, as you can see over here I got my parts laid out. Um, this is everything I've been working with. And I have some pictures of how it looked before I cleaned things up. You can see here, the filters are dirty, so I got new filters here. Had to wait a couple days to get my parts. Um, that's the gas tank gasket there, and you can see here this one is in pretty rough shape. Um, I got a new head gasket, because that one was also in very bad shape, um, and it pretty much disintegrated when I when I um, took it off the engine. Here it's just half of the head gasket there, so that's the old one. Um, and I got a brand new spark plug. This here is the old spark plug, and again, it um, might, might could have been cleaned up, but those are so cheap, I might as well just get a new one while I'm working on it. Then I'll give it a nice good oil change once I'm done. <clears throat> I took um, some carb cleaner and cleaned the parts up as needed. And I, you know, of course, took the valves and everything out. Um, this stuff was sitting out a couple days, so I need to wipe some of the surface rust off these parts. Just tiny little dots, no big deal. But um, once they go back in, they'll be fine. Um, but I took the valves out and I cleaned those up too. So you can see here, um, it's hard to tell maybe in the video, but it's down to metal. The metal is a bit stained and stuff, but it's down to the metal where before there was a lot of um, grit and grime and deposits on these things that was gunking up. Same thing with the inside of um, the cylinder head here. Again, I have pictures of this stuff. I'll, I'll uh, either put it on the video or, or in the same um, assignment here. But I cleaned this up as best I could um, with some soft wire brushes and, and uh, this soft pad. He did a good job not scratching anything, but getting the gunk out. <clears throat> and then I cleaned this up as well. Again, it's not perfect. It's the best as I could get it. This is a little bit older motor, uh, but I cleaned up all around here. This was all gunky. Cleaned the top of the piston, and I tried to clean inside the um, intake and exhaust ports here. So some of this outside stuff I'll clean up too, some of that dirt and stuff on the outside. Now you might be wondering why it's all the way taken apart like this. Um, way more than it should have been, but I had to take the wheels off so I could get the gas tank and stuff off, and that was fine. But then the screw right here, there's two screws there. One of those screws came out and it fell down into this basin here. It fell right in here. And the only way to get that thing back on was to take this piece apart and remove one of the blades from right there. From right there, then I could barely, you can see the top of the bolt. Um, just right there is the top of the bolt. That's the only way I could get to it without taking um, all of this apart, you know, and, you know, pulling this off completely from the, um, Crank cam or the crankshaft there, so that's why it's a part as far as it is. It really didn't need that, except for the fact that that one bolt got pushed in there, and I had to get that back out. Couldn't just let it sit in there. So I'm gonna set this camera up, and um, I'm gonna start putting this back together, and I'll make some comments as I do it and show you where all these pieces go. I know you guys are pretty well familiar with it. Um, in fact, you're very familiar with it, considering this is the engine we're working on. It's a Briggs and Stratton, five horsepower, um, L head configuration. It's super similar to what you guys have already been working on. Um, so yeah, let's get started on that. So to start here, you can see I got my uh, very professional setup here. Pizza box for the tools, pizza box for me to kneel on. So I got my tools and stuff set out already um, with the the right size bit and stuff just to save me a bit of time um, and this time I can uh, I can zoom in a bit closer and show you 
exactly what I'm doing when I'm putting these valves back in. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys remember, but I like to have that bigger hole on this uh, retainer washer facing out of the tool. And then I'm going to tighten this valve spring compressor down. And let's just go ahead and do, um, let's do the exhaust first. So the exhaust is the smaller of the two holes. So now I'm going to put that washer facing downward. I'm going to put it in here and hook that through. Once I see that I have it through, if I push on this tool now and push it into the, the engine here, that'll help lock it. So I'll do that with my left hand while I loosen it with my right hand. And then I can give it a swift pull. And it's in, just like that. So we're gonna repeat the process here on the next one. So again, I got that set up just like that with that, uh, that washer um, oriented this direction so that the bigger hole is facing out. It's, I find um, it's just a lot easier to get it to take that way. I've had a, a lot of success with it this way. Um, but really, if you find a way that works for you, stick with it, as long as it hooks. As long as it hooks onto the, the bottom part of this valve really well, then whatever way you find that works is good. So again, put that in there. Make sure the valve goes through the washer. There we go. A bit tighter than the last one. Make sure that once I push, it's good. It is. So I'm going to push on the tool here and loosen it up. And then what this is doing, as you guys remember, I'm sure, is it, it's letting that spring get its tension. So that's what's holding the valve in. They want to pull this out. The spring has enough tension to hold itself in place there. So now we have both um, springs and valve washers in place. So if I t were to turn this over a little bit, you see the piston moving. Valve up, valve up. Again, valve up, valve up. Oops, sorry about that. So, get both valves down again. And now I'm gonna get set up for, um, for the head gasket. Actually, I did forget one thing here. We can go ahead and put this uh, breather cover on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up like so. All right, so I got the um, head gasket here. And set that in place. Then I have the cylinder head here. So I'm gonna slide that in place like this. I gotta try to keep that head gasket where it's supposed to be. Which might be a little difficult. Get a bolt or two started. There we go. It's in place now. We can get the bolt started. Now, if you recall, when we're tightening these down, we need to remember two basic things. One, I don't want to tighten these down all the way um, in a circular pattern. I want to go crisscross.
Well, sorry about that, guys. Um, I had this all put on, and I forgot that I, uh, I didn't put the shroud piece on. So I went back and did it, and of course I forgot to hit record when I did it the second time the correct way. So um, these are the cylinder head bolts. They're torqued down, and then I have these bolts here to hold the shroud on um, both pieces. So let's move on. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the carburetor on. Um, I think it's going to be easiest to put the carburetor on and then the gas tank. So we'll see how that, uh, that logic works out for me. So I got the two bolts that look exactly like the ones that you guys have on your carburetors. And if you notice, this is the same carburetor that you guys have been working with, um, at least on the 3.5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton's. Um, same exact carburetor. So I was really excited when this engine um, was brought over and I saw that it was exactly what we are doing for class. And I realized we could um, you know, make a quick video of it and still catch up even though we're not near each other. One thing I did make sure to do on this carburetor here was I um, get this pulled around so you can see. I took this cover off to look at this uh, small little diaphragm that's in there. It was in good shape, um, nothing seemed to be held up, but it's always good to take a look, make sure see that needs to be replaced or not. Um, it was a little gunky. Overall, I think the reason it was having a hard time starting it was just because of all the gunk that was um, between the valves and um, a little bit in the carburetor. I think that was causing all of his problems. So hopefully when I get this thing put back together with the clean parts, everything will run just fine. Okay guys, hopefully it's not too hard to see what I'm doing, but Right here we have the carburetor, the part that goes down to the gas tank to draw fuel up. Um, right here we have the governor, and the governor, unlike the small Briggs and Stratton's we've been working on in Power One, um, the governor is inside, actually inside the crankcase here. And this is just a, um, a bar for a linkage. And that linkage, rather a spring, is right here on the gas tank. So that hooks on to this little part right here. And that linkage is brought up to the carburetor, um, or that, that control is brought up to the carburetor via this linkage here. So this linkage hooks onto the gas tank like this. I like that. And it controls it that way. And that linkage there is going to connect right here on the carburetor. As you can see as these move around, it's all going to be linked together um, via those arms and springs. So it is a little tricky to get on, but it, it does work best this way, I think. So I got my gasket here on the gas tank. I'm going to get that lined up how I like it and kind of hold it down. I'm going to try to keep that linkage um, hooked on there. Okay, so this screw here goes right there and it actually um, goes all the way through the carburetor into the gas tank and holds this gas tank on. Just had to wiggle the gasket on a little bit. But Here, the gas tank snugged right up, and before I get too crazy here, I'm gonna make sure those other holes line up really well too. So I'll finish tightening that down once I get the rest of this put together. But for now, I think we're pretty well good. I'm gonna hook the the spring up that's down between the two. Um, it's gonna be almost impossible to get the camera in there to show you, but I gotta wiggle my fingers in there to to get that hooked up, and then we'll move on to the throttle and the air cleaner. Um, and then we're pretty much done. After I get the rest of these uh, big non-engine related components on, um, we'll fire it up and make sure it runs. Okay, so the, the next thing we need to hook up is, um, I'm gonna hook up this throttle and choke control. 
And to do that, I need to remember two main things, um, at least initially. One is I have this wire here. This wire has a open copper end, and that's gonna connect just right here on the bottom. This is a piece I can push up and down. And that wire is gonna slide right inside that little plastic piece, and uh, it's gonna be in contact with this copper. That way when this kill switch goes to off, right here, goes to off, it makes contact here with that uh, copper piece. So you can see how that arm pulls away from the copper piece. It's on full throttle. When I come back, it touches there and it's off now. So that grounds out the engine and turns it off. Um, stops the spark plug from producing spark. Um, and no spark means it doesn't go. So I'm gonna get this hooked up. The second thing I need to worry about is the choke here. So that's the top arm. And right here is where that choke linkage is gonna go. Now here's my, my choke right here, right under the air intake. And here's my choke linkage already attached to it. So I just need to make sure that I'm gonna put this on. It goes through that choke. And I'll come over here and do the kill switch. So here I'm zoomed in to the throttle here. On this bottom one's the throttle. When I move it, you see how it slides freely? Nothing changes. It needs to slide right inside this little hook here. So I need to pull that hook back a little bit and get it just like that. So now, when I move it, it slides that whole arm. That whole linkage. So that's the last piece of the, the throttle there. There we go. So I'll get those bolts tightened down and we'll move on. And now it's ready for me to put my uh, four remaining screws in. Now, to start, I have one special screw. It looks like this, and it had a little, um, it's not really a special screw so much as it had this extra little um, hook on it, but it's two separate pieces here. And that's gonna hold this breather tube in. So the breather tube, let me uh, get the camera. The breather tube goes just on this side of the carburetor here. So here's my tube. It's gonna go right down to that uh, cover that we put on before. Gonna hook right up here to the carburetor just like that nice and snug real easy and all this uh, special screw does or special clamp does is it holds it down just like that so I'll get these screws tightened down and um, we'll be on our way Okay, we're moving, moving right along. Um, what we have left to do here is I want to prep the filters, um, the the um, green filter there. I'm going to prep with a little bit of oil, and I'm going to put the air cleaner on. Uh, we can go and get the exhaust on as well. Put the spark plug in, and um, I'm going to get all this back together before I try to start it. I definitely don't want to try to start it with with exposed blades and things like that. So, first things first, I'm gonna put it all back together. All right, so I'm gonna get the exhaust on real quick, and here I just got, it's very simple exhaust, just a washer and exhaust manifold here. So that is gonna go on with um, just these two bolts here. Nice and snug. So, um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. One more. And we're going to move right on here to this air cleaner. So let's go ahead and get that going. 
All right, so we're gonna get the air, air cleaner on now. Um, so, see here, I got my gasket on. And this is just gonna sit right on top of everything, just like that. And I have four sc screws here to put them on. Okay, I'm gonna wait to tighten it down all the way. See, I knew it was a good idea to close the choke. When you're doing this, Make sure you close that choke. Um, the exact reason why I just did right now is um, I just dropped my screw by accident. You don't want stuff like that falling inside the carburetor. It could be really annoying to get out, to say the least. I'm apparently really good at dropping things. Could have got it out with a magnet, but it's best to not even have to worry about it. Little things like that can save you a little bit of time. Some headaches. Okay. Just sprinkling just the slightest bit out here. Um, so I'm going to wipe that down. I have uh, two filters here and my cover. So this first filter, it goes in like this. It's kind of my, call my pre-filter there. And this one's gonna go in like that. So I have my uh, pre-filter in there and then my other filter. And I'm gonna orient this this way. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Brand new from Briggs & Stratton, the exact one for this engine. There we go. Well, that's pretty much a wrap on the engine. Let's take a quick look and review what we did here. So, again, I always set up a nice professional workspace. If you got some pizza boxes, it helps a lot, keep your knees from getting dirty. So here we put the exhaust and the air cleaner on, along with the carburetor and the gas tank, and of course the cylinder head and gasket and spark plug. So we did this just to clean it up, and as you've seen from the pictures, or we'll see if you, um, if I didn't put them in the video, I'll have them linked. But you'll see how dirty it was, and that it was likely causing a lot of issues for it uh, just to get started. So this should run a lot cleaner now. Um, I'll definitely have part of that in the video here in a second once I get the rest of these things put together. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean the wheels off a bit. Don't want to put anything back on that's dirty. And then I'm going to uh, put the chute on and this uh, larger chute on. And once those get bolted back on and ready to go, um, I'll get this thing warmed up. And I'm going to do an oil change on it too, but I'm going to get it warmed up a little bit first. And then uh, drain the oil out. We'll get a little more oil out of it once it's warm. And then I'll put fresh oil on and it'll be a done project.